Okay, so we're back. This is definitely more of an impromptu review of a show um, that I didn't even know if I was really going to watch, but then decided to give it a go and I needed to reflect on that a little bit and um, see if I was alone or if people have similar feelings. Um, either way, I'm just curious. So, there it was. Firstly, I, I was able to completely and utterly binge watch Stranger Things Season 4 and uh, I brief synopsis on that one. <laughs> Fantastic. It's really good, really crazy, all over the place. Can't wait to see how it ends. The second part's coming up pretty soon. But then I was like, you know what, I'm in a good TV mood. Or, well, I mean, whatever we have as far as TV goes now, streaming services. So I was like, well, I know Obi-Wan came out. So I want to give that one a go. And to be fair, I am and have grown up a Star Wars fan for pretty much the entirety of my life. From growing up in the 80s, we had all the toys, me and my brother. Uh, we had all the toys. We probably still have some of those, but very well used toys. So, enjoyed those all. Uh, I was in high school when the prequels came out. And, you know, went and seen all of those in the theater. Uh, enjoyed them. I was younger, so I didn't really catch as much of some of the stuff that's kind of wrong with them as much as you do now. But, you know, still enjoyed those. And I've been pretty excited about pretty much all Star Wars stuff that's come out. I never got super into, like, a lot of the animated stuff, although I have since then a little bit more. But uh, new ones came out. Enjoyed those for the most part. Uh, Rogue One is actually probably my favorite Star Wars movie. I definitely think that one was the most, uh, I don't know, it was just the most different different take on it. Very, very much so a war movie, not like a lot of the other Star Wars movies. Um, that one didn't really care about Skywalkers, which is kind of nice. It was very little to do with the Force, which isn't a bad thing, but it was definitely something different. Uh, but anyway, really enjoyed that one. And then, uh, actually, Mandalorian really got me kind of back into the fold. So the first step, first season was really was really pretty good, and then the second season, wow, that one was just fantastic. Had a lot of cool cameos, some good acting. I mean, Bill Burr was in that one couple times but there was uh, quite a few people you got to see some live action folks that were only from the animated to that point you know so katana um several other folks and oh, so that was pretty good um boba fett came out i i didn't get on board with that one just yet i may still go back and watch that one um but i you know i didn't i, I heard kind of in the middle like it was okay it wasn't bad wasn't great um, so I might get to that one, but Obi-Wan is a very interesting one to me because I really enjoy uh, Hugh and McGregor and I very much so enjoyed his portrayal of Obi-Wan more so than honestly the original one because when you think about the original one Obi-Wan's not in it a lot. I mean his uh, presence is there sure, but there's not a lot of time with him uh, really learning more about Obi-Wan. So uh, I've always enjoyed uh, Ewan McGregor's interpretation of that and then him uh, getting the show is awesome and getting back with Vader, you know, being in the show and potentially maybe there being a fight or at least a confrontation. That all is really cool because, again, as in retrospect, when you watch it back the show or the movie, like their last fight, I mean, at the time is what it is, but it's very, you know, anticlimactic compared to like their first fight chronologically when they're on Mustafar. Um, Anyway, so all this to say, I was pretty excited to, to give Obi-Wan a chance, and uh, they, they released the first two show, two episodes, and started watching the first one, um, and you know, parts of it start really well, like Obi-Wan, it's like, what's he doing? It's, there's probably going to be some spoilers in there too, in case you don't want to know that, just because uh, I feel like you kind of need to talk about some of that in this case, but and regardless. Uh, there was some pretty cool stuff. You know, it's Obi-Wan trying to figure out what he's doing. It's 10 years later, and he's just watching over Luke. And it's kind of a cool gap to kind of fill in the uh, Star Wars mythology, so I'm kind of on board for that. Um, he's doing some, you know, labor work, stuff like that, keeping an eye on folks, just doing things, working with, uh, dealing with some Jawas and stuff, which are really cool looking. But uh, then it kind of gets into a little, a little more weirdness where... And by weirdness, I think what maybe has happened is I have to remember Star Wars is definitely geared towards families and maybe simple plots and I think the dialogue was not good for most of this. Again, Ewan McGregor, he's selling it, he's, he's going full bore, but there's several other characters and actors in here that just seems like they're 
in a different movie or they were miscast or again maybe ultimately I'm just not the audience for it although I kind of figured I would be because I'm prime nostalgic Star Wars kind of person so it is what it is but uh, they'll introduce they introduce several um, well, the Inquisitors, the Grand Inquisitor and you have uh, some of the sisters so there's a couple other ones and uh, honestly Grand Inquisitor is pretty cool uh, I can't remember the name of the other one it's got like this cool turtle head kind of not turtle head but like mushroom head kind of thing it's awesome and then they've got another one and I don't even remember her name. Uh, she bugged the shit out of me almost instantly. Um, I don't know. It, it just very much so seems like, and I don't mean this, no, I do mean this in kind of a negative way, like old Disney show shows where they're, you know, very speedily put together. The dialogue's meh, but, you know, it's a Disney show, so it's fine. Or some of those Disney movies where they weren't planning on going to the theater. And, uh, yeah, the, the, the delivery and things... It's just not good. I, I couldn't buy it at all, and it was very. Um, I, I think the other, the other thing that's kind of taken me aback, and I'm kind of shocked, is I just come from watching Stranger Things, and in my opinion, that's one of the more well-written shows. Let alone everything that's going with that—the directing, the the cinematography, the editing. The editing is masterful in that show because you've got like 15 or 20 different characters and they're all interwoven in between and it's just fairly seamless and this was super clunky it was very odd um but you know i was like hey you know that's the first episode maybe they're gonna you know, pick it back up in the second one so gave it a little break watched the second one and i can confirm uh, it was even worse i found there there's just several scenes where i would found myself almost laughing out loud uh, but it was more like laughing in shock because of I can't believe this is actually what they're putting out as the Obi-Wan show that I've heard about it seems like forever literally forever that there was going to be either a movie of Obi-Wan because uh, Ewan McGregor has been wanting to play the role and definitely reprise it and um, this is what they put out there they have um, Leia and Luke you know he's watching after Luke Leia's uh, I believe on Alderaan with Jimmy Schmitz, Jimmy Schmitz, um, you know, he came back, he still looks pretty solid, he's gotta be, I mean, he's gotta be like, what, in the 60s or something, I don't know, but, look pretty good, even that stuff, though, and I guess it is all how Alderaan, or just Star Wars is set up, I mean, it looks very, just generic, it looks like it's intentionally all shot in front of a, a green screen, so you can just have super CGI background, which I guess does put it in line with kind of the prequels, but this is kind of supposed to be transitioning the prequels into the, the the original series. It just didn't look super good or realistic. And, and again, this is no slight at the little actress that's playing little Leia. But first off, and this may be my lack of context with kids, I think she's supposed to be 10. And there's even a line where uh, Obi-Wan's like, how old are you? And she says 10. It's like, oh, you don't act like it. Because she looks like she's five. She looks like she's five like a toddler that has barely figured out how to walk but she's got the rebuttals and intelligence to just know of all these intricate plans and and setups and stuff like that and oh he should have done this and should have done that fine whatever the things that really pissed me off the most were there's a scene several scenes where Leia is getting kidnapped or attempted getting kidnapped and she's running from full-grown adults I think one of them is actually flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers uh, correct me if I'm wrong but they are chasing her through the woods and you know what I'm talking about when I say like a five-year-old or a toddler, they don't run in like a linear line or very fast and they're not very agile. So it looks like they're kind of just duck, 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 walking down. You've got three guys that are trying to chase her and they're kind of running around in little circles. Oh, so they can act like she's getting away. It's the most ridiculous chase scenes. It, it, again, it's like when you have like a cool action scene where there's one guy taking on like 15 guys and they all just kind of line up or they spread out and some of them are just kind of flailing their weapons around to try and kill time before it's their turn. These people were trying to let her run away so they could try and chase her. That happens several times. She runs away from Obi-Wan and gets away from him, gets away from the Jedi Master Obi-Wan by high-stepping it. Um, so there's, there's things like that that really just bug the shit out of me. Then... Uh, there's one scene that's just really, again, laughable came the term in my head because the one, um, uh, what do they call it, Inquisitor, that's just dead set on getting Obi-Wan for some reason, 
I guess because it's definitely what Darth Vader wants. Uh, but even against the wishes of the Grand Inquisitor and everybody else, and, and they're constantly just saying, you're reckless, you're reckless, you're reckless, you can't do this, you can't do that, and she keeps doing it anyway, keeps doing it anyway, doesn't listen to, whatever. Uh, she puts up a, a thing for, like a bounty for Obi-Wan, so you got like all of these bounty hunters slash little lives that are just looking for him on this planet that he's uh, basically kind of trapped on at the moment, trying to get away with Leia. And she's just sitting on the roof waiting to hear something happen. You know, it's very Batman-esque. I can appreciate that. I'm a Batman fan. Uh, but what's funny is, again, while Leia's trying to get away from Obi-Wan and succeeding, because, you know, that 10-year-old, I guess, even though she looks like she's five, can run like a lightning bolt. Uh, she's on the rooftops getting away. And then Obi-Wan starts getting shot at by multiple sleazebags slash bounty hunters, whatever they are. I think two or three different teams. A of which is also the most horrible shootout where you're just sitting there just bing bing. They're just kind of shooting at each other. There's no consequence. They don't really feel like they're going to get... It's weird. But you have that. You have all this calamity going on. And then the Inquisitor lady, she decides she starts running. Okay, I can hear it. I can see some shots. It even zooms in. I'm headed right over there. She starts parkouring her way over. It's the most ridiculous, not realistic parkour kind of running on like a wire that just doesn't make sense. You know what I'm talking about where it looks like they're literally still gliding on a wire and just trying to move their legs and arms around so it looks like they're very athletic and super powered. It's not good at all. There's a point where she's running, does a backflip and front rolls to land it when she could have just taken a step. It was, it, it was just ridiculous. The best part is whatever's happening with Obi-Wan, he's in the shootout with these three other folks, Leia's going over something else, he clears out with them somehow, I don't think they even show what he does with those per se, saves Leia from falling, even though it wasn't a fall, she jumped to try and get away from him because all of a sudden, you know, she's the smartest girl in the world and then all of a sudden she's the stupidest girl in the world. Um, it's really weird. Anyway, he catches her, goes down to the street, gets her, goes to try and get to the airport, has a whole nother scene with this guy that's, uh, actually he's in Eternals, trying to, um, he's a fake Jedi, but he's gonna help him. And they have this whole scene about why he's gonna help him. They're trying to reestablish that there's hope because there's there's still a Jedi or some Jedi out there. Uh, so you have this whole scene, which is, you know, like, a, a, we're gonna do this, you need to go here, I'm gonna help you because of this, blah, blah, blah. That Inquisitor lady's still running, still running on the roof. Cuts back to her, still doing some more parkour. She's been running literally for eight to ten minutes. They've had two scenes where that's been over before she finally kind of catches up to him, and then it's a very odd standoff, and I was disappointed, I guess is my take home message here. Um, they did show a little bit of uh, Darth Vader, and had Anakin realizing that Darth Vader's still alive. I also don't know how that Inquisitor knew who Anakin, or that Anakin and Darth Vader were the same person. I don't think that's common knowledge at this point in the Star Wars universe, but I'm also not a complete nerd or Star Wars nerd, especially as of late, especially as of things like this keep coming out. Anyway, I'm, I just had to get that off my chest because it, I wanted to really like it, and I have really liked several things. The Mandalorian, especially season two, fantastic. But this one's just, wow. I'm not even sure if I'm going to watch the other episode. Oh, man. I kind of need to see what happens with Vader, though. Maybe I'll watch some cliff notes. Uh, okay. Maybe I'll give the third one a try. Third episode. But if that doesn't completely... Re oh, I don't know if I can even sit through it. It's like cringy. It's that bad to me. Um, honestly, I felt the need to put this out there because I was curious as to if I'm just batshit crazy and or if people actually really like it. So I was looking around a little bit and... I was getting kind of mixed reviews as far as when I was looking there. Some people were like, oh, it's so nostalgic and you've got some of this cool stuff. And it does have some cool stuff and it answers some questions. You get to see some of your favorite characters in a different light or again for the first time in well, however long it's been since the prequels came out, 15, 20 years, whatever it is. Um, but I also think that there's people that are just avid Star Wars fans, which I have been, that are going to like it no matter what. And I'm going to force myself to remain objective on this one and it was not good it was not good at all thus far so hopefully it's gonna get better I'm hoping Disney can um, turn it around for me because they've been let me down recently let me down pretty harsh uh, 
I have not liked most of the things that they've put out on Disney Plus as far as their Marvel stuff, um, Disney stuff. Well, I guess Star Wars wise, they did get Mandalorians. That was good. I guess they have some other stuff coming down the line. Disney. I mean, Star Wars was doing it for me. They were actually they were actually bringing it back. I think it was mostly Mandalorian that was doing that. I was I was pretty excited, you know, when they had Luke coming back and stuff. It was really cool. So I hope they turn it back around. But this again, this is the one they've been talking about this show in some facsimile forever and this is what they get and they they put this out and oh by the way well let me know if i am crazy or maybe i'm just being hypercritical again i did watch probably one of well definitely of this year probably my favorite show ooh, stranger things peacemaker that's ooh. probably have to do something with stranger things pretty quick here too um but i'm kind of deciding whether or not to do that one before the second part of the fourth season comes out or after, but that's only like a month, so we'll see. But like, share, subscribe, let me know what you think. Do you agree? Uh, or were you a fan of Obi-Wan thus far? And uh, if you are, what did you like about it specifically so I can try and glean some hope? Um, but right now, I'm, I'm not very hopeful.